All right, it's now time for episode four of our Hard Knocks slash One Jet Strive. That's really just a Hard Knocks uh, recap. It is me, Blakey Locks, and the Jetstream guys, Jesse and Connor. Guys, what's going on? Feeling good? Um, just moved. Enjoying <laughs> my new my new place. Congratulations! You live like what five blocks away from me now. I, like I, yeah, pretty, I, I'm um, between fifth and sixth now. It's nice. You're kind of like getting a little closer every every like year or so <laughs> to where <laughs> I am. Like. Seem closer. <laughs> yeah, as we get older, we move further and further away from the path station. <laughs> that's see, that's the goal. Yeah, that's... If you're live in Hoboken. That's the goal. Yep. Yeah. Just as far from far from there as possible. Um, but it was a big 100%. week. Uh. In Jets world, we unfortunately didn't have an episode last week. All kinds of crazy scheduling from all three of us. Couldn't make it work, but um, so we have lots to talk about. So we can just kind of get right into it. Obviously, um, the way we've been doing these recaps is kind of going through the episode. um, But the main story here is going to be the stuff from the Jets-Giants game. There was a, a lot of content that came out of it, both on Hard Knocks and just in real life. Um, and since then we've had cut day, we've had a lot of stuff go on. So, uh, we got tons to talk about and stuff that we didn't get to talk about, uh, from last week. That's kind of a continuing storyline, but, Mm -hmm. uh, the way we've kind of started it every time is just big picture episode four of hard knocks. What did we think? Connor, go ahead. I thought it was great. It was definitely one of the better, I mean, your sample size for a show like hard knocks is not like massive considering it's only a few episodes, but Definitely was one of the better ones. I think, like you said, I think anytime you get to watch the Jets and Giants play one another, it doesn't matter if it's preseason. But, like, now when the teams are, like, kind of, I think especially with the Jets, have a lot of hype behind them, that game did feel a little different, especially because the Jets starters were in. It was the first time that we'd seen Aaron Rodgers play. Uh, The first time we'd seen him play, like, you know, throwing the ball to Garrett Wilson in a real scenario. Granted, it was against the Giants backups, but – was still obviously very exciting to see to see it play out you know us watching the games live i don't, I don't know where you guys were watching them but um uh, or blake you and i kind of talked about it a, a little bit already but uh i was with a couple of giants fans so kind of like talking shit with them what like about it and then um yeah and seeing that on hard knocks even just seeing like behind the scenes stuff from any game regardless of what the game is uh is always cool but this kind of felt a little different and was a lot more exciting to watch Mm-hmm. Jesse, I really enjoyed this episode as well. Uh, I think that was the general consensus across all of Jets fans. Everyone really, really enjoyed this episode, and it, just because it had a lot of different things that we all wanted to see, and we finally got to see. We saw Aaron Rodgers play in a game, um, and all the lead up to that, we saw a lot of the younger guys, uh, which I liked a lot. Um, seeing. Xavier Gibson and Jason Brownlee and their relationship. I didn't, I didn't know that they had a relationship going back even before they were uh, signed by the jets. Uh, So that was cool. And then, I don't know. I just, I I really enjoyed seeing Tanzel smart get a little bit more. (laughs) So, I mean, I don't want to get, you know, jump the gun too much, but it just overall, there were a lot of things I finally, that we, we got to see that I was waiting to see. And it was like the, you know, the UFAs and those types of guys. I love that stuff about Hard Knocks. Yeah, we've kind of talked about how so far it has been a bit of the the Aaron Rodgers show, which I don't think Jets fans mind too much because, like, we really can't get enough of the Aaron Rodgers content right now. But this seems like more of a traditional Hard Knocks episode where you're getting some the rookies, you're getting guys, like, seen at Tanzel Smart's house, like, guys, like, at somebody's house, like, off way, like, a lot of the stuff has been at the facility. Like there hasn't been a lot of stuff like uh, off off the field. Um, so there's been more stuff like that. And yeah, it's showing some some of the young guys and then really good game action. Um, and we can get into some of the the stuff that was more like the stuff that we saw on Hard Knocks. But just from the game, watching the actual game, uh, I was at a bar. I had been at a bar since like two o'clock. <laughs> uh, to celebrate the return of college football, went to the bar to watch the Notre Dame Navy game. And then like right when it ended is when the Jets game was starting. So we were just kind of like, we might as well just stay and, and watch the Jets game. And so I, I to be fair, I'd had a few drinks by that point. 
Uh, but the when Aaron Rodgers threw the touchdown pass to Garrett Wilson, also there were like nine people in the bar we were in probably. <laughs> he throws this <laughs> touchdown pass, and I was with my buddy who's also a Jets fan. I jump off my bar stool and start like pumping my fist in the air, and he jumps out of his chair, and we like hug each other, and it's just like <laughs> disbelief that it's like it. There have been multiple moments where I'm like, oh, this is real. Like the 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 team flies out to meet with him in California. Oh, this is real. Like on he goes on McAfee and says, I intend to play with the Jets. Like, oh my God, this is real. He signs the contract. He's on the practice field. Like all these moments that were like, oh, it's real. But watching him in a Jets uniform throw a touchdown pass to Garrett Wilson, which was not just a normal touchdown pass, it was a ridiculously gorgeous throw and a, a beautiful catch just made it like oh like I it was like a whole nother level of this is this is real the next time we see this happening it's going to be a, a real football game in that same vein what makes it like it is it it isn't just a normal football pass but at the same time it is because that's just what he does and that's what makes it like so incredible like that's what like it still hasn't hit me yet either really like he makes that look routine like that's what that's what we, we we've been seeing him do that sort of thing forever, and now he's like actually on the Jets, and it's mm-hmm. I'm a hundred percent with you. Like just seeing that play unfold, and it being New York on the chest oh. instead of Green Bay is just surreal, and um, I can't wait for these these touchdown passes to count for real. And it was I was at my fantasy football draft for like the league that with all my like you know my friends and stuff that we've been in for I don't know 13 years probably 12 13 years and I'm the only Jet fan of the group a couple Giants fans Dolphins fan like we're we're kind of like all over the spectrum in terms of fan bases so naturally they're all talking shit like the entire time Rodgers is in there and of course what was it is the drive it was the first drive when they chased him out of the pocket and he kind of like fell over and threw the ball out so naturally they're all laughing and stuff like that and laughing at my expense i was just glad to see that he wasn't hurt because i had i'm sure you two did as well i had a flashback looking at remembering zach in the preseason game last year that kind of happened on a very similar play of him getting hurt so i was just glad to see that and the next drive he just goes right down the field and does touchdown so like but then Amazing. again i also can't react in like a super positive way because among to them, it's against backups, and I'm also trying to celebrate a jet touchdown. So I'm yeah. just like kind of running around. And I went inside for a second. I had myself like a good fist pump. I couldn't do like anything like over over enthusiastically without getting shit on by my friends. But I think we were all in the same boat as far as <laughs> being yeah incredibly so, excited by that. <laughs> well, we have plenty more real touchdowns to celebrate oh, yeah. that you don't have to feel guilty uh, about celebrating. Um, hopefully against the Giants and hopefully against the Dolphins. Plenty of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully against the Bills in uh, 10 days Oof. or 11 days. Yeah. 12 days, whatever. Monday night. Uh, but we can kind of run through the episode a little bit and then some of the stuff we'll definitely want to talk more about. But the very first uh, scene of the episode was kind of a callback to the episode before where Zach Wilson's putting on his headband. And the previous week we had seen Rogers kind of like busting his balls about like, why do you wear the headband? And Zach said it kept sweat out of his eyes. And uh, Zach was like, people were making fun of me for the headband. They were making fun of you for wearing wired headphones. Uh, and <laughs> this was our first real Aaron Rodgers, like, oh yeah, I forgot. He's kind of nuts moment where he yeah. said, uh, he said that, AirPods or like Bluetooth headphones give you a uh, harmful EMF emissions, which is why he uses wired headphones, <laughs> um, which was the first real Aaron Rodgers. Like, Oh yeah, I forgot yeah, I about this forgot side of Aaron, Aaron Rodgers <laughs> that uh, <laughs> uses <laughs> wired headphones. I know some people are like, Oh yeah, I just have them. Never stopped using them. Don't like the way AirPods feel. He's like, no harmful EMF emissions is uh, why I'm sticking to the wired headphones. Connor, I appreciate you standing with our quarterback. Well, uh, I- I I do use them actually to, you know, listen to music on my phone and stuff like that, but that's only because I stepped on one of my AirPods and broke it. If I still had them, I'd probably still be using the AirPods. But Jesse, I'm gonna now that you said that, I'm yeah, no. I'm, I'm standing with Yeah, Aaron. run with it. 
standing with Aaron now. <laughs> um, so that was a very funny uh, Aaron Rodgers moment. <laughs> uh, but then we saw, which we, we've we talked about a little bit, that we didn't see in the first episode of Hard Knocks. So then we saw in the second episode, which we all thought was cool to see, which is kind of the not like, oh, everything's perfect with Aaron Rodgers side of things, um, other than just conspiracy theories. It was uh, just some shots at, at practice where a couple guys like ran the wrong route. There was a false start penalty and you could just see he was getting, he started to get really pissed, like chewing guys out. Um, and it's, you kind of like, for me, it's something that I like to see. Cause it's like, we've obviously seen the good side. It's not like we think he's like this all the time. Um, but the best quarterback in the league should be demanding perfection, any quarterback in the league. But if you are the best of the best, you should be demanding perfection out of everybody on the field um so i actually like seeing that and especially these young guys like i think that's part of the problem last year is why things fell apart is not having like that quarterback leader Mm -hmm. that the whole team could look to and kind of be like we need to like get things together um and things kind of fell apart um but now we have that which was cool yeah definitely i I like seeing the the negative side of things like i feel like with one, and I don't know if you guys noticed this, but sometimes one jet's drive, and I guess to, to agree with Hard Knocks, where it definitely you can tell when certain sound bites were recorded and that they can just like put, like pick and choose where they place them and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, where it's like, you know, in training camp, you know, late in training camp, things are starting to get hot and heated, and then like everything kind of works into the, that Rogers sequence. But um, yeah, one jet's drive, we kind of only really get, ever get like the you know, everything is golden. Everything is kind of like, you know, sunshine and daisies over at Florham Park. Hard Knocks, I'm really glad to see, like you said, Rogers getting pissed. Because we hear kind of like the stuff about players being, it's like, yeah, you know, he's like a completely different person when he's playing. Like, he's a nice guy, like off the field. Like, I love hanging out with him, love talking to him. But when he's on the field, yeah, he's demanding perfection. Like, he's, um, he's yeah he wants the best out of you and he's going to get it no matter what and that's exactly what we saw and i mean how many times have you watched a jet game and see them get a false start penalty and be screaming at your tv or something like that so it's good to see that the quarterback's doing the same thing Mm -hmm. and a guy like rogers is someone that the offense is going to listen to so having that back up and being able to see that actually how that's all unfolding was awesome to see yeah, I love also, you know, like not only did like he chew out his receivers and was upset about the wrong routes and whatnot, like he would that I I genuinely loved seeing him get really upset. But then the way that I guess I'm gonna give hard knocks the benefit <laughs> of the doubt and that they didn't selectively edit this and that that a sequence after was the next set of reps of him hitting all the passes. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You because know? I really liked that juxtaposition. They were like, he was really like things weren't going. Mm-hmm. They nothing was working, and some. You know what? Like, yeah, he's a Hall of Famer. Like you said, like, like you guys were saying, like he's a Hall of Famer. Like he 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 demands perfection. Not it doesn't always go right, even in practice, even when it, like you like it's supposed to be going right every single time, you know. And I just loved seeing the the offense bounce back, at least how they portrayed it it was them bouncing back from that really bad set. Um, and it's, I mean, the way they portrayed it, Rogers was the catalyst, obviously. Yeah. 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 So and I, it was him, it. him getting pissed. And then we saw the other side of him, which is also a kind of recurring storyline. We've talked about with him and Nathaniel Hackett, where Rogers was basically on the sideline being like, this guy should be doing that. Like, I don't know all the terminology he uses because it's, half of it's over my head but Wasn't basically like, picking out the different receivers and saying this guy should be running this route and this guy should be going underneath here and then this guy goes there and then he hits that throw that basically he was talking about to to Garrett Wilson and again we don't know if that's exactly how it happened in that order yeah but the way they made it look was was very cool yeah he goes 17 step into my office and then like that right. sequence started <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah I love that and was that I love that was it this week's episode when he was talking about when Rogers was talking about Garrett Wilson and the fact that he's like too fast, and that he's like, no, it was it, it was, was last one. It was last, last, one, last I one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just like since we didn't talk about it, but just him being like, he's too fast. Like I'll put the ball there, and he's already like two yards past it by the time the ball gets to that area. I'm like, see, it's yeah, like, he's 
So he it's puts like, it on the wrong shoulder, and that's yeah. the throw where he caught it and like moved it like as right. he was catching it, which was crazy. That's amazing. Um, I love that. <laughs> but that that connection has has been unbelievable. So we saw him kind of drawing up plays and and a lot of Rogers stuff there. But then it switched to uh, the defensive line. We got some focus on the defensive line room. Uh, it showed uh, them in the the meeting room where they all have the like links and they all link it up to a big chain and they all have to kind of stand up and say, I'm not going to be the weakest link, um, which was a cool, I mean, a, a lot of that motivational stuff is like pretty like cheesy from an outside perspective, but like that stuff clearly works with, with athletes, like being able to like visualize stuff like that, like, mm-hmm. um, and, and having that mentality. So that was cool. And then we got some more focus on the defensive line, uh, where they were at Tanzel Smart's house, um, making a cooch. Solomon Thomas was making a a car coochie board. Uh, <laughs> they were doing a crawfish boil that looked yeah. very good. Um, and so we got to see all those guys. Yeah. Quinn Williams was there and all chopping it up. So that was cool. Tanzel Smart, where is he from? Louisiana, I think. Yeah, so somewhere crawfish, in the south. Crawfish, but man, that, that accent was that accent was coming out. But he was just like my grandma's mm-hmm. crawfish recipe. I was like, oh mm-hmm. shit, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Crawfish is amazing. You can get like, oh, a, yeah. like two pounds of crawfish on a plate, and you'll just be, you'll still be hungry at the end of it. <laughs> yeah, it's like eating shrimp. Yeah, it's like the, you, you get nothing, but you can just eat a thousand of them. <laughs> uh, um, and who was it? Tanzel Smart wearing the the car coochie yeah. board shirt. Yeah, he was wearing his he was wearing his merch. I love yeah. that. Yeah, and was that amazing? Did he, did he make that, or did was Solomon Thomas was that? Solomon too, right? Thomas made the board. He and made I the, thought it yeah. looks good. It did look it good. Put, like the great salami in the cup and made it into like a, a rose or whatever. Yeah, like a little yeah, design. Was a, that was impressive. He took Solomon a class. Thomas, Solomon Thomas guy. took a charcuterie class for sure. Yes. Well, big yeah. theater guy. That's yeah, and he's like yeah. the yeah, he's like, like the him, leader of him, the Rogers, Uzama, like they're all big theater guys. So yeah, uh, he's a classy guy. Yeah, obviously, if you're a theater guy, you're a classy guy, you're a cultured guy. So obviously, you know, make a car, uh, a car coochie board. <laughs> a car coochie board. Yeah, a man of culture can make a car coochie board. <laughs> Wasn't Solomon Thomas a top 10 pick? Was he? I don't know. That's a long time ago. He was I, he was a first round pick for the 49ers. I'm I almost positive it was a it was a top 10 pick. Was it was it Stanford? Yeah, he went thir- to? third overall. Third overall out of where? Stanford. Stanford, yeah. Yeah, he was with uh yeah, the Niners, then he was the Raiders, and then he came here last year. Yep. I mean, he's only 28. He's I actually thought he was a couple years older than that. So did I. Yeah, same. I mean, I guess for being in the league for five years, 28 is like, I don't know. A while. Yeah. I mean, that makes me happy. If it means yeah. he's, he's younger and fresher than I thought he was. So. His Wikipedia has him listed as six foot two, two 256, and I'm pretty sure at least 50 pounds of those are in his arms. Yeah. He yeah. A, he no, he's absolute, massive. His ma- his arms are like the size of Volkswagen. He's got he's got <laughs> some ca- he's got some cannons. Yeah, that's for sure. Um and then after the defensive line stuff, we switched over to to what you referenced earlier, which was the Jason Brownlee and Xavier Gibson thing. Um that at like the senior bowl, I guess it was, they became it was like the uh, NY near uh, it was like the players association or yeah, one of those things. Games, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, one of the things yeah. college guys go to that are, are getting ready for the draft. And a lot of the times those things try to highlight guys from like smaller schools yeah. that don't have like big pro days and stuff, which both of those guys are. And I guess they became friends there um, and then both ended up getting signed by the Jets. So that kind of worked. And like you said uh, earlier, Jesse, I didn't realize that they had known each other or anything before that. So all that stuff was cool to see in – I mean, we can talk about it. Like, spoiler alert: they both have made the team, um, which is very cool. Uh, we wanted them both to make the team. I think uh, Xavier Gibson really established himself as like the punt returner um, for the team. Like, he he had great punt returns in the preseason, so that kind of established his spot on the roster. And then uh, we can also talk about this a little bit: Corey Davis retiring. Is, yeah. is possibly what opened up that roster spot for Jason Brownlee, which I'm very happy about because, I mean, I think he has boatloads of potential. Yeah, I, I like Jason Brownlee a lot. And Xavier Gibson, he, you you hit the nail on the head. He looked shifty in yeah. the return game, you know, and that's exactly what you want. 
Um, I, that, I think there was a line uh, with Sala at one point where there was a flashback during this episode um, to the previous game where he was like, next one, I'm taking it. Next one, I'm taking it. Cause he like got tripped up out of bounds after like taking it like to the 40 or something. Yeah. Um, he's been, yeah, he's been impressive. And then, I mean, I'm obviously going to root for a Southern Miss guy, Jason Brownlee. Clearly. He's, he's got my support from the get go. <laughs> uh, so I'm absolutely, uh, I'm, I'm overjoyed that he made the team. Uh, and it's definitely because Corey Davis retired. I think that that's pretty apparent that that extra wide receiver spot was opened up and he got that. Right. Or quote unquote, whatever. I mean, Corey Davis, that situation. I mean, I don't know if it was on one Jets drive or hard knocks when Sala told like kind of address the team about it, Both. but he was just, mm-hmm. yeah, but he was just like, you know, he's, the door's open for him to come back whenever, if he ever wants to reach out to him, show him some love or something like that. I think there's definitely not to speculate. I hate doing that with the players, but yeah, something. I mean, something just makes me think that this wasn't entirely a decision he like fully wanted to make. It doesn't sound like, or something at least is going on that kind of yeah pre- like precipitated like this decision because he's still like I don't know twenty eight. Yeah, he's he's not yeah exactly. He's not like a an older guy. So, but anyway, I mean, like you said, yeah, it's exciting to see both those kind of young guys make the team what? because nope. I was going to say, was he the same draft as Solomon Thomas? Corey Davis? Yeah. Could have been. They're not the same. But yeah, I mean, it because it did start with him being away from practice for a couple of days with a it being just like personal reasons why he was away, which you think maybe death in the family or something like that. It's it usually when a guy steps away. It could be a million that. different things. Um, and then it turned into, oh, he might not be – coming back at all to, oh, he's probably going to get cut to then Mm -hmm. he's deciding to retire. So yeah, it's a very strange situation. And like you said, we don't want to try to guess what happened, but um, hopefully everything's okay with him and and his family and everything And long-term everything's okay. And yeah, maybe it's a weird situation where maybe halfway through the year, whatever's going on with him or whatever, he's like, you know what, I'm, I want to come back and, through an injury or whatever, there's a roster spot open and maybe he comes back. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jesse, to answer your question, he was same draft. He just picked two, he just picked fifth. Yeah. <laughs> right after Solomon Thomas. Or yeah, two I mean, picks. Probably, yeah. When you said Solomon Thomas was twenty eight was twenty eight, I figured it was a good shot that they'd be in the same draft. For sure. Wow. Two former top five picks. We had no we had no idea. Pretty nice. Uh and one other cool thing with with Xavier Gibson, just before we move on, is uh, we saw like Randall Cobb talking about him, and Randall Cobb talking about how like he sees things in him that are like he thinks he he has tons of potential. Um, and Randall Cobb had basically talked to Aaron Rodgers about it and been like, "I I know what this guy has. Like I'm, I'm gonna try to make sure." And it basically. It's something I actually like to see because it's like, oh, this guy is like nowhere near as good as he could potentially be. Like he clearly has like a lot still to learn probably about like the mental side of the game is what it seems like. It seems like he's just like not quite consistent enough, like with his routes and and stuff that just comes with practice and repetition Mm -hmm. and, and putting in work. So like that's something you can't teach, like becoming as ridiculously fast and agile as he is you can teach guys how to, or you can work at like perfecting that like route running type stuff. So, um, I mean, can't teach speed, can't teach speed, which he seems to have a a ridiculous amount of. So, um, we, we got one of the best moments, um, in hard knocks history, in my opinion, which is the Robert Sala Sopranos, uh drive into MetLife Stadium with the Tony Soprano uh drive and it was when the music started I was like what is about to happen and and I was like (laughs) confused I was like did my max app just like glitch and go into uh the Sopranos somehow into a new episode and I I was like I was like kind of falling asleep and then that hit it's like jolting me awake I was like wait what (laughs) what is happening right now (laughs) that was Um, like I think the only thing that would have made it better is if they saw if they just I don't even know if new like tolls in New Jersey even give tickets anymore. Mm-hmm. If they just like called up NJ Transit or just like hey, can we just have a toll that gives a ticket for just 
it's just one sequence, just so you can grab it like this, like Tony Soprano does, like so triumphantly an in intro to Sopranos. That'd been awesome. Wow. Yeah, it, it was unbelievable. Uh, I couldn't I couldn't believe it. Well well done. HBO. Well yes. done. Well done. But then they're the only ones who can pull it off. They have like the rights to it and everything. Mm -hmm. Like they definitely had to like be like they definitely had to call up like like fucking Zaslav or something and be like, hey, can we use this? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like if you ever want to win over a production or win over a fan base that was like unsure about wanting to have hard knocks, you just did it right there. Like and a drive. that one was for us. That yeah, Gandolfini was that, is a Jets yeah. fan. Like it's yep. just perfect. And I saw I saw Michael Gandolfini, I think, tweeted about it or posted about it or something like that. It was just oh, like, you know, that makes like happy. a thumbs up or like the salute thing, because he obviously was in some of the pictures of his dad at some of the Jet games and stuff. And so that was a uh, that was good to see. Yeah, so that was it was unbelievable uh from a production perspective. And then we got the actual game, um, which was awesome. Uh Jets Giants is always good, like we were saying. Uh obviously the the big moment from the game, both on hard knocks and uh, on social media and everything, is Aaron Rodgers on that drive um, where uh, we end up getting the touchdown pass. Um, Jihad Ward, uh, who's a defensive lineman for the Giants, uh, takes a couple extra steps and gives Aaron Rodgers a shove, which which Rodgers doesn't like, and he kind of goes back at him. Uh, and is like, that's bullshit. Like, you know, that's bullshit. Like, don't do that, basically, which I think is fair. Yeah. Um, and then he, yeah. the ward wanted to argue with Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Rodgers delivered. Probably like he ends up saying later on, it, it's uncombackable. Like one of the coldest lines you can say to somebody. He just said, I don't even know who you are. <laughs> Kill shot. Hit him with, hit him with the shot. Thanos. Like, I don't even yeah. know who you are, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the Thanos, it's the uh, Mad Men meme where it, yeah. I feel bad for you. And he said, <laughs> I don't think about you at all. <laughs> it's just it's like so the, good. The, the most brutal thing you can say to somebody is like, you don't even exist in my brain. Like, you're and, completely and irrelevant. The worst part about it is like, Ward came out today and was like, yeah, you know, like we took it like I was just defending my boy. Like they were laughing about that hit that Randall Cobb delivered. They were laughing at Randall Cobb. They were like, dude, you yeah. just lost your training camp money. Like there's there's video of it. We we watched it. We listened. Everybody saw mm -hmm. it. And like everyone was making fun of Randall Cobb. They weren't laughing at the guy that he hurt. They were like, oh, 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 we hurt him. Like that's not a thing that NFL players do. So he's just like making something up in his head to like, I guess, motivate him. Clearly, he, he probably just saw the like, clips and watched Hard Knocks. Yeah, like, so yeah. He realized that he looked like a dumbass, yeah, and that he looked like he got completely embarrassed by Aaron Rodgers on so have, so national like, teams. Like our so. side of the story wasn't told. Like, uh, uh, we, we all we don't need your side of the story. We watched it happen. Yeah. Like, and that's you not the point. Our hard knocks. That's not the point. Is to tell the other team's side of the story. Yeah, it's one team's focus. Yes, we understand the Cobb hit was it was a bad hit. It's it so something you can't do anymore. But that's why that's why Cobb caught shit from Rodgers in the, the huddle. Like, dude, you can't do that anymore. It's not 2014. Also, so that's like, that's just seeing Cobb's wife and his his uh his kid in the audience yeah. too, and she's just like, well, yes, that's a check. That's a that's a fine coming in the mail now. <laughs> yeah, she knew. She's got she enough experience to to know me. when when it's a fine, when it's not. Yeah. Also, and, like Jahad, Jahad Ward, like this this game happened last weekend. Like you got the regular season to worry about now. Like you right. should this 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 does not matter. Yeah. All right. And just keep your head um, down and work. You know. There's and, just like, no. Ignore this. There, there's just no way. What and no, there's just no way yeah. that he could that he could have thought in the moment is like, oh, they're laughing at my guy. It's like no, they're not laughing. <laughs> he no, said he said I also, don't know who you are. And, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Was like Hold bulls, on. but it was like bull. Like was this no. guy was was he on the Giants last year? Jihad Ward. Yeah. So was he? I wonder if he was. He was on the field when the thing with came on with the thing with Thibodeau and Nick Foles. Happened. Yeah. Someone replied to that to that video with that yeah. clip of of came on Thibodeau doing that, and so uh, I was like, "Are you, you yeah, same situation? Like, you cool yeah. with that?" Like Nick Foles was literally like on the ground, like having like a seizure next to Thibodeau doing yeah. snow angels. It's like 
So don't don't give me that. <laughs> like, yeah. don't, no, don't it was it was. It, I think he realized that he looked bad, so he just had to come up with some kind of excuse. But the only way he could have seen that is if he watched the show, right. and if you watch the show, <laughs> then you see the exact context of what happened. Um, but I thought the best part is after that happens. Aaron Rodgers goes down the field, throws that touchdown pass that we were talking about that's so unbelievable. And after he throws the touchdown pass, he goes back at Jihad Ward and goes, don't poke the fucking bear. Yes. It's just unbelievable that in a pre – this guy is so obscenely Ooh. competitive. He's been in the NFL for 15-plus years. He is playing in a preseason game, and he just takes – he just locks into that mode where he's going up to like a third string <laughs> defensive lineman and telling him, don't poke the fucking bear. And I, I legitimately believe that he would not have thrown that touchdown pass if, if that wouldn't have happened. If he wouldn't have like been like this guy fucking saying he doesn't know who I am. I'm about to show you who I am. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. It's literally you know Jordan. Thank you, I took Jehovah. that personally. It's like I took that personally. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's literally that. So he's like, I'm going to go out there. And you know, he probably walked up to Solid afterwards and was like, I'm going back out there. I got I got something to do. I got something to take <laughs> care of. So I'm going back out there for another drive. And Solid's like, sure, whatever, man. <laughs> like the the greats. And, and like, you know, Michael Jordan's famously like would like make things up about his opponents yeah. in his mm-hmm. head to motivate himself. And all the greats do do something along those lines. You know, I'm sure Tom Brady. I like find found every I mean we know Tom Brady found every single little individual slight as like the most he took it more personally than anything you like any normal person would and used it to motivate himself and Aaron Rodgers is clearly the same way you know he's he's gonna use yeah. anything he can to give himself that edge that's what Beautiful. Hall of Famers do you just got to find whatever you can I mean it, what it, it's what made Kirby Smart one of the best coaches in college football is not anything to do with football but the fact that he managed to take his team that had just won the national championship the year before returned a lot of players from that team that also had the number one recruiting class and somehow convinced him that they were the most doubted underdog team in america and so they all had this mentality where they would go into these interviews and be like yeah, nobody expected us to do this. And everybody's like, you guys won the national, like the (laughs) players were so convinced that they were like the underdogs in every situation. And they went on to win a second national championship. So if you can just like get something in these guys' brains, that's like, Mm -hmm. here's extra motivation for what you need to do. It just like something clicks where they just go into a different mode and they're like, okay, I'll prove it. I'll prove it right now. Absolutely. And I, I, that's one of the things I love about the, the, alpha elite athletes like all those all those guys the killers yeah they 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 do that and it's just those are the best stories man like those are the best stories for sure we just we just gotta hope he's he's doing the same thing come uh i mean we all know he's he's got more (laughs) he's he's more motivated than he's been in years like yeah that's for sure first, first time he's been the otas and three four five years first time he's played in a preseason game since 2018 like i think they said the last time he played in a preseason game zach wilson was a freshman in college yes yeah that's what they said it's (laughs) i mean yeah exactly like he he's shown up he has fully embraced it and at this point like we've gotten to see him play like it's real guys it's here in two weeks on 9 11 he's gonna be suiting up and he's gonna face buffalo and it's gonna be like we're gonna be one and oh or oh and one Whole teams and, get get healthy at the right time. Yeah, like, like it, it's it's a, it's officially arrived. So like it's all coming together. Yeah, it's it's here, man. I'm I'm very excited. Very excited. yeah. So the the sad part of the game that was tough to watch was was the Tanzel Smart injury, where clearly he uh, hurt his shoulder and was slow to get up to the point that they blew the whistle. But then he wanted to stay back out there, and then they made him come over and and look at the injury and he clearly got emotional to the point that he was crying on the sideline, not because of pain, but in his head being like, I really don't think I'm going to be able to get back out there. And if I don't get back out there and and do something, I'm probably going to get cut from this team. And Jeff Ulbrich comes over and is like, are you good? Like what's going on? And he's like, or it was maybe the defensive line coach. One of them came over and was like, is is everything good? And he's like, 
what are, what are the emotions for which made it seem like yeah he's obviously like crying or like looking very emotional and uh he was like i need to play in this game man like i need to be in there and it's like oh like it's just it was it was brutal especially knowing the the end result that he does get cut and luckily has been signed back to the practice squad so he's at least there hopefully we'll we'll be ready to get in if if we need somebody to fill a roster spot but I'm, that I'm sure that part got to me yeah. I'm sure he'll play a snap at least at some point this season. And yeah, yeah, I'm really happy that he got that. The news that he got cut, like that made it a lot worse to watch. And then exactly what you said, like hearing today, that made me feel a lot better that he's going to be around and he'll be at the facility and he's going to be, you know, part of an organization. Um, like I've, I've mentioned this a couple of times in all the episodes, but my favorite part is like getting to know them like personally, like the players, the stories that they tell and, they focused on Tanzel Smart because they didn't really like with the, with the limited access that the Jets allowed. They didn't really do a lot on the undrafted free agents mm-hmm. and the younger guys until this week, where um, they saw who's the wide receiver or tight end that did the Jerome oh, Cap, uh, Jerome Cap, the Jerome Cap, um, and they had something with him this week, which we haven't gotten to, but. Uh, and then Jason Brownlee and Xavier Gibson, like we finally got to them this week, right? And normally, like you get to learn, you get to know them a little bit more throughout the whole season. They follow them through the whole season, uh, but obviously the access didn't allow that this year, and you know that's that's been a little disappointing. But it's been it's good that we got it this episode at least, you know? Yeah, for sure. And it was like it it hurts, like I at least Tanzel Smart. Like both were saying they're back in the practice squad and everything, but you know, last night watching it, not knowing that he was coming back in the practice squad yet. And it's like on top of the whole sequence during the game, and then they kept going back and showing his wife and his his kid like in the audience watching him and seeing her reaction to her kind of realizing that he was hurt too. Also mm-hmm. it was just like, you know, deep down, like this this sucks watching this like play out. Like this really sucks. And same thing with Cap. You know, you kind of like, you know, he had pretty much outside of anything Aaron Rodgers related, had the best moment of Hard Knocks with that whole sequence and, you know, got the shout out from Eminem and everything like that. So, yeah, Eminem posted yeah, the video. Yeah, I mean, like, that was awesome. And you're it's never going <laughs> I mean, away. I'm sure you guys have seen Eight Mile as many times as I have. So I know like that whole thing, that whole sequence yeah. of him watching, hearing uh, Cap talk about when Complex posted the video. And I'll go mm-hmm. in the comments like this dude's so offbeat. This, dude, <laughs> this dude stinks at it. He's just so offbeat. Like he's like, I can't win. <laughs> he's like, I'm not a rapper. He's like, I'm, I'm not a rapper. Like, I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> but I'm not a rapper. Whole... Super high. Exactly. <laughs> um... Yeah. Yeah. No, but it was it was funny. You know, not not funny watching him because he found out. Um, he finds out in the episode or that he got cut, but we already kind of knew. I think. Mm-hmm. going mm-hmm. into the episode so that he had been cut so i guess he must have found out monday I yeah guess. probably no? um because yeah. yeah watching that because we already knew the cut when we were watching the episode yeah so yeah having to watch like the the crawfish boil at tanzel smart's house like it's not even football related it's just thinking about like oh he's like clearly like gets along so well with these guys yeah him and his wife and his kids seem so happy thinking about them having to like move to a different city and like that's the part that like gets to you which is why that like off the field because when you're just like oh he's gonna play football somewhere else like no big deal but then you see him cooking in his house with his family like with the the guys on the team and you're like oh my god it'd be devastating if this guy had to like move across the country and just like start fresh basically right yeah he's this it humanizes them you know these these are people they have right. lives you know this isn't just a game this is a paycheck they need to be able to afford to live um so like knowing that news it, it was it was it was gut-wrenching seeing that and that's why today's news of him getting signed to the practice squad is just that much sweeter uh yeah. he's, he's gonna get a paycheck yeah. and he'll be a contributor to this the team and yeah i mean he's been around for like three four years now at this point yeah Mm -hmm. on and off the practice squad so yeah he does know those guys a lot um yeah knows the coaches knows everything exactly and so he's been with this organization during this come up um and i'm glad that he's gonna be able to you know potentially reap the benefits of that yeah cap wasn't so lucky but 
you yeah. see like also i mean him talking about the sacrifices that his family's made and it's like my siblings and mm-hmm. you know whoever is like driving me places to go to games and practices and then they show the picture of him with all, like, all his family and they're all decked out in jet gear i'm like Oh, God. He had a hell of a run, man. I mean, he he tried out for the team. I'm pretty sure it was division. Yeah, I think two. you're. Yeah, I think he he just and... got like the he was undrafted, and I think he just got the call for to come to minicamp for like tryouts and stuff. Yeah, and he made yeah. it, and he made it all the way to cuts. And yeah. I mean, yeah, it's I mean that's 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 the reality of the NFL, man. It's the business, mm-hmm. and like I said, I, these are the stories that they get to tell. Um, and it's an unfortunate reality, but it's part of part of the business, and we got we watched it firsthand. Yeah, and that's so we we knew going into Hard Knocks we weren't going to see any cuts, which I totally understood. Like that's such a a brutal thing to have like cameras on you, like as you're getting like the worst news you could possibly get, and it, it is pretty brutal. So I totally got why the Jets were like we're not going to show anybody getting cut, but we like halfway saw cap get cut like we saw him with no audio like in the facility walking out of the facility with like a big trash bag full of stuff and like getting in his car so we like halfway got a cut moment um which is probably the only one we're gonna get but that was yeah i mean it's brutal to see and with those two guys that they kind of had you rooting for through different storylines and both get cut. One made it to the practice squad. Um, but there was one one quote I wrote down uh, from Tanzel Smart, which is during that scene we were talking about when he, he gets hurt. And then he, I th- he comes back into the game for mm-hmm. a little bit. Um, and then it's like a he's standing out on the sideline next to like Quinn and Williams and like JFM and a couple guys on the defensive line. And it, it was the most like simple line, but it just like hit me. He was like, I deserve to be out there with you guys. Like I deserve to be there with y'all. And I was just like, damn, like he, cause yeah, like we were saying, he's been there for three or four years, like on and off the practice squad. Like he's gotten to know these guys really well. And like, he's had a great training camp and a great preseason and he's just looking at these guys. And in his mind, he's like, I deserve to be like a part of this group. Like I know I deserve it, which is like so brutal to then still be told like, nah man sorry you don't and then i guess mm-hmm. practice squad to an extent you you are still part of the group you'll be in meeting rooms and stuff as a member of the practice squad but um that line ripped me apart a little bit yeah yeah that was tough um but so that was kind of the the whole episode um it ended with the drum cap getting cut and walking out to his car um and one well, jet's just... drive yeah, no, go ahead. I just say, just we, we, I don't think we mentioned it, but Nathaniel Hackett is a lunatic. <laughs> yeah, we got I mean, more more gold member content. Yeah, like yeah. he's just a crazy, he loves gold he's just a crazy so guy. Much. Yeah, he, like I totally understand the gold zone and yes. the mantra behind it and the reasoning behind it, but like he goes above and beyond and like themes it off of gold member. And like you just think they pan to Rogers and he's like just cracking up and like <laughs> how ridiculous his buddy's being and like it's like I don't understand how Hackett got portrayed the way he did in Denver if this is what he's actually like like that must have been it's like a Russell Will- a Russell yeah. Wilson like mafioso hit job blaming Hackett for all the problems when in reality it was Russ and the Broncos will be a dumpster fire this year is what I'm hoping. I hope so. Yeah, uh, I think yeah. it's probably just the case of a guy is built to be a coordinator and not a head coach. I mean, like it's it not for bold. sure is a, it for sure is a thing. I mean, I can see how if things are not going well and you're like two and six, and he's doing the gold member jokes, you're like, come on, like we need somebody yeah. to fucking like get everybody like fired yeah. up, and not be like the fun coordinator. It's like it's kind of like being an uncle. Like mm-hmm. you could be the fun uncle who's like, let's watch Gold Member. Don't tell your parents we're watching Gold Member. Yeah. Uh, you're when you're like 11 years old and you aren't right. supposed to be watching it. And it's like you can be the he, Nathaniel Hackett can be the fun uncle who can who can hang out with Aaron Rodgers and call the offense. But some guys, when they get that number one leadership role, it just like doesn't fit their personality. Right. Very possible. 
Either even so, I did not know that Nathaniel Hackett was remotely like this. I thought that he was like some like I I would like when when the when I heard for the first time that Aaron Rodgers loved Nathaniel Hackett like a brother and that they were super close. After everything that we heard about him and from Denver last year, I was like, what am I missing? You know, like what like I heard this guy was like a bum, like this guy stunk and the whole locker room hated him and blah 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 like hack at this, hack at that. He's the worst head coach ever. And I mean, this guy helped Rodgers win two MVPs, and like we 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 see the video, and they're just like shooting the shit. He seems like the goofiest motherfucker, right. and like, I, it's just, it's very interesting how he was portrayed as like the main villain last year when there was a lot, clearly like a lot more was going on than just him. He was definitely a problem, and yeah, like you said, like not everybody's built to be a head coach, right? But it definitely feels like. Something's a little off with that, with how yeah. he, like, like, yeah. fun, like fun he seems. Yeah, I get things not going well, like football wise, but yeah, everything of it's like, oh, everybody hates him. It's like I don't get how that would be possible at all. Um, and and yeah, based on everything, I I knew nothing about him other than like his name and his job. Like I didn't know anything about yeah. his his personality before this. Um, and so based on, I expected him to kind of be like Todd Bowles. I expected him to be like Damn. really serious and really like football, like whatever, like this is what we're going to do. It's time for the game. Like not motivate. I was like, just like a total like bore. Like, and, yeah, he was just like, yo, like when you score, like, I don't want anybody celebrating by themselves. He was like, was it Zonovan or is he? One of the two. I think it was Izzy. Izzy. Yeah, Izzy. He yeah. was like, Izzy, like you're running away from the group when they're all celebrating. He was like calling them out in front of the whole mm-hmm. team, the whole offense. Yeah. I, I like that a lot. I like that mentality of you win as a team, you lose as a team. And when you win, you celebrate together. When you lose, you lose together. Uh, and right. that's that's a team building itself. It, it's not just like the actual building blocks of the team, like the, a GM and team building are usually like terms that are associated with each other, right? um chemistries and styles that fit right um but team building itself like the actual exercise of like becoming a group and like bonding is something that's important in any like any endeavor really if you're going to work in a group and it seems like he actually like wants that and a lot of coaches are like drill sergeants and it's just kind of a nice change of pace to see like he can be serious we've seen that but he can also like he also is like this fun guy who's like making the game fun for a you know, in the middle, a young team um, who seems like they need that. Right. Yeah. Um, so in, in One Jet Strive, there are a couple things that we don't really get uh, too much in Hard Knocks we can touch on really quick. Um, but like we said, I think the One Jet Strive kind of production staff has basically like been cool like stepping to the side and just being like we're gonna let hard knocks have all the good moments like it's only for five weeks and then we're gonna do the rest of the season so like we'll let them have this and we'll just yeah use like some highlights and like a couple little moments but we do get a cool uh interview at the beginning with bob washusen who if you're a local new york new jersey jets fan then you grew up listening to bob washusen on the radio uh i love when bob was using calls a college football game i always will will put on the audio for that game because his voice just like makes me think football like it's just what i associate with with football when it comes to a, a voice unbelievable um so seeing him talk a little bit about this team and like the excitement with this year's team was was the the one moment that i thought was was cool from one jets drive this week bob's a good guy he's a nice guy um I've actually I've had the pleasure of like getting to interview him and meet him. And that was definitely the highlight of one judge drive for me too. Just seeing his take on it um, on the season, everything that's really gone down. I mean, he's the voice of the jets. Mm-hmm. So, you know, getting his opinion, I think is, is worthwhile. Um, and that you can't say that about everybody out there. Um, so that was really great getting to see that. And then like, you know, other than Bob, you know, it's just kind of like a highlight reel of the game. Like there was a lot of game footage this week. Um, I think that that you hit the nail on the head. It's uh, they've kind of taken a back seat. That's a good way of putting it. You know, I totally agree. They're kind of letting Hard Knocks have the best shots, and I, I respect that. You know, you make a good yeah. point. They're going to have the rest of the season. 
Exactly. They're going to have plenty, yeah, plenty of moments themselves, probably more mem- like memorable moments they're going to get than Hard Knocks would have, obviously, you know, because they're going to get the regular season. And um, yeah, and as, as always, shout out our guy, Bob. I mean, he's he's got like I was thinking about it, like when he when they played the audio of the Garrett Wilson touchdown. He has that, like, he says it really quickly sometimes, like, and that's a jet touchdown. Like, he says it like that, mm-hmm. kind of, like, super quick. And it kind of reminds me of uh, Gary Cohen sometimes calling the Mets when he has his little kind of, like, phrases that are always like, mm-hmm. forget that. That one's way out of here. Like, those certain yeah kind of turns of phrase that are, you know, um, that the announcers always seem to use a lot. And in between Bob Bashir's and calling, like, a, a crazy touchdown, like, losing his breath halfway through, that that's a jet touchdown always gets me a lot. But – um, so yeah, anytime they get you get any of his, you know, insight on the Jets, um, like you were saying, he's, he's the voice of the Jets, him and Marty Lyons. So, you know, you love hearing also again, I'm I'm not trying to take a slight of the Giants, but it's like comparing the Mets and Yankees announcers. Bob Bushus and Marty Lyons compared to Bob Papa and Carl uh, Carl um, Banks. Carl Banks. I mean, just Night and day, man. It's night it's and night day. And day. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, I'm not saying Marty Lyons is like the most like you know like amazing announcer either, but like Carl Banks is just like so dry, and so is Bob Papa for that matter. I mean, it, it it's it's not I I can't even it, it's not fair of like it's not a fair fight there. Like Bob's like calling like conference finals like, like hockey games, and, yeah, and like doing like major college football games. Like he's going to Happy Valley and like doing like sunday night game like saturday night games or whatever yeah bob pop is not doing that stuff yeah bob, bob pop yeah, is like a strictly true. just the giants radio yeah. and bob pop is like all right he's bob pop is fine i like bob papa but bob was choosing is just on another level he's like yeah. he's the real deal without question yeah. i mean is he uh is he the only is he all only called penn state games or is he like no no he's just I, I know that Bob's called Penn State games. He doesn't do yeah. night games per se. That's Fowler, but yeah, um, yeah, right. he he does big. He does ESPN. Yeah, big right. afternoon right, yeah. college football games. Um, he does yeah. a lot of Big Ten though. He does a lot because he does like usually the noon, like a noon game on ESPN, like whatever the. It's, it's usually a big, uh, Big Ten game, but yeah. So um, he, he like always Purdue, has a very, Iowa or something. You know, he always has a very Beth, Beth Mowens will get Illinois versus Northwestern. And mm-hmm. both games will end nine to seven. Mm-hmm. Got to be, he's got to have a real love for it because I don't do not envy those weekends in the fall. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I gotta, oh, it's brutal. A, I gotta be at a game. Oh, now the Big Ten is like across the country. I hope they're not gonna be sending him to like freaking California. Yeah, like a USC I'm game. Him, I'm expecting him to be at a Jet game the next. Day. I would not <laughs> mind. I would not mind Bob with shoes and calling a Penn State USC game. I mean, Just it would be bad. Just saying, <laughs> sure you wouldn't mind. Yeah. By the way. uh, <laughs> couple of my friends are going to Penn State, West Virginia this weekend. Um, should I expect the Penn State trouncing? Because they keep telling me that that's what's about to happen. So, yeah, Blake's the, Blake's the expert, but yes, I can, I can concur. I will concur with that assessment that it'll be a trouncing. Okay. Yeah, cool. they're they're twenty one point favorites. Oh, West right. Virginia's West Virginia's got a, a a pretty bad team, and Penn State has a, a very good team. So and. And I think part of that reason that it's only 21 points is because people are unsure who's playing quarterback for Penn State for the majority of the game. True. Yeah. I have no idea who, <laughs> who it'll be either. Franklin so. hasn't released a, a depth chart yet. Oh, so. really? Yeah. Which is like coming to trend. I saw, Sa- I saw Saban isn't doing We're getting way off topic here. No one cares yeah, about And now we're into college football. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, anyway, we don't need it. Guy. <laughs> we don't need to talk about Drew Aller for like three more years until he's uh, in the NFL draft, and we're drafting Drew Aller to yeah. to be our next starting quarterback after Aaron Rodgers retires. From your lips, we'll worry years. about it. <laughs> drafting Heisman winner Drew Aller would be an honor for the Jets to do that. Damn right, national <laughs> champion and Heisman winner Drew Aller. Stop! Uh, stop it! Stop it! <laughs> Listen, I'm just saying. The last time the Jets took a quarterback. From Penn, State. from Penn State. Oh no! Don't Penn say it. Don't things say it. didn't go well. I remember where I was and who I was with. <laughs> so do I. I remember where I was too. I was, in, I was at Com Radio in State College, and everybody just turned to me and was like waiting for, like looking at me, like waiting <laughs> for me to res- like respond to Hackenberg going, and I was just standing there, like so silent. I just threw 
my stack of papers on the ground and I ran out of the room. <laughs> I was so mad. My one of my friends that at that moment stopped being a Jets fan. He just really gave up. he just gave up. He was just like, I'm done. I can't. I'm I'm sure that he was not alone that night. Like McCagnan yeah. probably he uh, broke he, he broke quite a few of us. I yes. I I fortunately survived and I'm well <laughs> yeah those people those a good way to wrap up this episode is those people that that quit on on us back in the hack days are not welcome at the parade in Correct. February. Uh, we will be there, luckily. Um, Damn right. Mm-hmm. We uh, have one more episode of Hard Knocks next week, so uh, hopefully all of our schedules will work out where we can get an episode out on that um, to kind of wrap up Hard Knocks, and then uh, in we next Monday we'll be, we'll be playing NFL football. We're playing for real. And we'll, have keeps. A, we'll have uh we'll have our our jet stream going each week to recap the games and preview the following week so and we'll have blake on as much as you want to come on my friend awesome yeah I, this is this will be the end of the road of us as a, an official trio but uh yeah <laughs> I, would, I would love to come on some some jet streams uh Absolutely. throughout the season um and yeah so make sure you're subscribed there to the jet stream for all that stuff uh and wherever if you're watching this on youtube blakey locks on youtube and whatever yeah thanks for listening we got one more episode next week see you then peace